everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to share with you a quick update on my funded account challenge with my Forex funds. If you've been following my channel you'll know that I've been carrying out one of the funded account challenges with my Forex funds and this marks the end of week three of my challenge. So before I share with you my results from the end of week three I'm just going to give you a very brief recap in case you missed the previous videos. So week one, I started with an account balance of $50,000 and I had a bit of a rocky start to week one and I actually took a loss on the account. By the end of the week, I was down 3% on the account. This was due to a combination of different factors that I do share more about in the video. I'll include a link above for you if you want to catch that. In week two, I managed to regain my focus and finish the week up 2.5%, which still meant I was slightly down on the account overall half a percent, but I was definitely going in the right direction. Well, the end of week three, and I've managed to have a really good week this week, I've managed to make three and a half percent, which means that it's put me green on the account overall, and I'm currently up on the account two and a half percent. So I have one week remaining, next week is my last week of the challenge, and as you probably know, the target of the challenge, the profit target is 8%, so I've definitely got a fair way to go. But my goal isn't really to hit that target, I'm just focusing and concentrating on taking the best trade setups and ultimately finishing green on the account. Because I know that with my Forex funds, if you respect their rules and you finish green, then you're going to get either an extension or a free retake. So if I focus on the present moment and follow my plan, I'm trusting that it's going to work out in the long run. If you want some more information on my Forex funds, if you're thinking of trying out the account yourself, I did create a video which shares a lot of information about my Forex funds, comparing them against FTMO, which is another popular prop firm. And I'll include a link to that video below and above, whichever way you want to go. <laughs> So let's jump onto the computer. I'll share with you my broker data so you can see the real data, the real trades that I took on this account this week, and also a breakdown of the trades themselves looking at the charts. Okay guys, so I'm in my broker here in MT4 and I've actually had a little bit of a confusing week when it comes to software, so I'll just explain that briefly for you so you know what I'm talking about. I've had a few issues being able to access the MetaTrader 4 app on my mobile phone. Basically, it just hadn't let me log in using the account that allows me to manage my trades. So I can log in on my phone using the investor account, which means that it's a read-only access. But I couldn't actually log in on my phone to be able to manage trades, which is what I like to do if a trade is going in my favor. I like to be able to manage the stop, maybe trail a stop, a profit stop, but I haven't been able to do that, so it has been affecting my trade management abilities. Well, this week I've been talking with somebody at my Forex Funds using their Discord chat, and they were really supportive, a really good shout out to them because they got back to me straight away, and they've set me up with a new account. So it's basically a new account in terms of login details, but they set me up with my account balance as it was at the time, and obviously the same remaining days, so it's still technically the same account. It's just different login details, but that means I've also lost my account history before Wednesday of this week. Unfortunately, I did take a few screenshots of the previous account history just to share that with you guys. But if you wonder why it's a little bit confusing, because as you can see here in account history, it actually says the 30th of November deposit. Well, that was my account balance at the time on the 30th of November when my Forex fund set up this second account for me. So these are the trades that I took from, I believe it was Wednesday. Oh no, Tuesday. So yeah, Wednesday was when I set the trades. So from Wednesday onwards, these are the trades that I took. But at the beginning of the week, I also took two trades, which were some really good trades taken. So here's a screenshot of my previous account before I started this new one that allows me to use the MT4 app on my phone. And as you can see here, 29th of November. So these were both taken on the Monday. And I took two trades, one on pound Swiss and one on euro pound. Both of those trades hit my 3R target. So for both of those trades, I managed to make 6R. But for me, I've been using a reduced risk. So I usually risk 1% per 1R. However, with this funded account, I've been risking half a percent per 1R. So for these 6R combined winners, I actually made 3% in total for those trades. And then on Wednesday, I set a few buy orders. I set three orders here and one was a loss. So that was minus half a percent. 
One was break even, but I set my stop slightly above just to account for the fees there. And then the other trade, I trailed a profit stop. So I was aiming for 3R profits, but it actually hit my stop at 2R. So for this trade, this winner here, I ended up making just 1% on that trade. That basically covered the cost of the previous loser and gave me an additional half a percent profit. So it meant that I finished the week up three and a half percent. And just loading up my folder here that contains these screenshots for each trade that I take in the week. And as you can see, I've actually got 16 images saved. Now out of those, I didn't actually take all of those trades. I've been playing it quite cautious this week because it is week three and I'm getting close to that end goal. I didn't want to over trade and I didn't want to risk getting emotional at this stage. So out of these trades, quite a lot of these, I, I set a couple of orders on and then I canceled them. And then some of them I decided to watch. And as it turns out, the majority of these trades would have actually won. So if I'd have gone ahead with them, I probably could have made more profit, but I'm not complaining because I'm still happy being up three and a half percent on the week. So let's just go through some of these trades from the beginning. This is a trade that I didn't set um, I really considered setting this sell limit, but I didn't. I decided to watch it instead because it was a little bit choppy. It wasn't clean. It wasn't a quality. So I decided to sit it out. I used this previous reaction leg measurement to the major structure here once we made a new low to calculate my forecast for a sell limit entry. And although, as you can see, if I'd have gotten into this trade, I would still be in it. I probably would have had a trail profit stock by now. So it went in the right direction, but I didn't actually take that trade. And here is a trade I did set an order on at the beginning of the week for Euro Australian dollar. I had a buy limit order set. And if I just zoom in a little bit, as you can see, um, after this closing green candle, I set a buy limit order at this level using this previous reaction like measurement and price action came within only about three pips of my order, but it didn't trigger and then it went off without me. As you can see, the trade is still in action, but it, it certainly went in the right direction but it went without me and that's all that matters. Another trade I was looking at here was for EURUSD and I was a bit hesitant to take this because I didn't have a confirmation candle on the daily chart, which is uh, just something that I've been utilizing to really get a quality trades using my strategy. And because it didn't match that, I didn't get into this trade. I'd still be in it and I still have this on watch for next week. So if I do have that larger time frame confirmation, I might still take this trade next week, but I haven't actually gotten into this as of yet. Here is a trade on Pound New Zealand. I actually really wanted to get into this trade and I think I just um, genuinely just missed this one. I didn't have an order set and I wasn't trying to miss it. I think I just genuinely missed out on this trade, but I basically drew this previous reaction leg -like measurement here and applied that to the high to calculate an area where price may pull back to. And once we got this large green candle here, that was where I was thinking I could have set an order, but for some reason I never got round to setting the order. And it would have got triggered and I would be in the green, but it's, it's gone off without me. I still have it on watch because we've not broken that swing high yet. So if price dips down, it might give another opportunity for an entry long, but at the moment I'm just watching it and seeing what happens. And I had an order set here on pound dollar, again, using these reaction like measurements and going with the trend, going short. Um, I set a sell limit at this point here, but just before it got triggered, I actually canceled the order. I had second thoughts about it. And that was mainly because on the daily time frame, it, it didn't look a quality. I didn't have the confirmation that I usually look for. I didn't have momentum. It had a lot of wick rejections to the bottom here. And I felt like there was a chance that it might start curling up. It may pull back to the structure here. So although I could have gotten into that and I would currently be in the green as I'm recording this, um, I decided to sit this one out and just watch it and see what happens. If we start to get some strong momentum or I get some more clear signals that move this to an A quality trade, then I may reconsider getting onto this. But at the moment, I'm just watching it. And a similar story here, really, with New Zealand CAD, another trade that I didn't take. I was very close to setting a sell limit here. It would have meant I would have been in during this choppy action, uh, but it wasn't quite ready. I didn't have the confirmation. However, since then, we had this really nice big bearish candle here, which to me shows that we're getting the momentum coming into the downside because we've pulled back to this leg using this previous structural point here. We've had a little bit of a battle between the buyers and the sellers. 
As you can see, we had a strong bullish candle up, but we also had a strong bearish candle down, some mirror bars there. We had another attempt here, this green candle to move up, but we had this large wick rejection. We drew all really good signs that the sellers are winning this battle. And then we had this strong bearish candle coming down here, bringing the momentum to the downside. So since seeing this action here, I'm actually really interested in getting short in this trade still using my original plan. As I'm recording this video, I'm going to just watch and see what happens today, see how the daily candle closes and I may set an order for this either later today or maybe early Monday morning to see if I get another op opportunity to get into this short. So now you've seen most of the trades I didn't take, let's have a look at the ones that I did take. So starting from the beginning of the week, Monday the 30th of November, here is one of the winning trades that I took on Euro Pound. For this trade, I was just using market structure and reading price action, and I basically zoomed right into most recent price action here and the Farley time frame. We'd broken this previous swing low here, and I used this measurement to calculate a possible area for pullback in confluence with the standard fork. Now, as you can see, we did get a dip down and a retest there, and that's where I got in, and price action uh, behaved beautifully, and it just went straight up to my 3R target. So that was a nice win there on euro pound and i had a similar trade taken on the monday again on pound swiss but this time i was short against pound swiss and for this i was just using structural levels so although we had been coming down here we'd had this pullback and i was initially quite long biased but once price started breaking down with strong momentum here breaking this consolidation area here I thought it was clear that the bears were taking over again and resuming this downtrend. And once we got this big bearish wick rejection candle here, that's when I got short and I just rode this down with the momentum, making a 3R profit on this trade. So they were the first two winners that I took at the beginning of this week before I got my account changed over. Um, and as you can see, the two combined profits there, which was a really good start to the week. Moving on to Wednesday, this was one of the trades that I set for USD CAD, and this was actually a losing trade. This could have very easily have been a winning trade for me, because when I set this plan initially, my order was a little bit lower down, and I was aiming for an entry at 2740, not 2744. After we had this green candle here closing, price started surging up, and it was surging up and I thought it was surging up without me so I actually got in on a market order and raised my stop and my take profit which isn't something that I should have done I should have just set a normal buy limit order and trusted that I would have got that retest entry but I didn't and what happened as you can see is although I was in this initially it dipped down and hit my stop now looking back at this same trade a few days later and that candle that had dipped down Let's just go back again. This red candle here that dipped down and stopped me out, you can see that we actually had two hours and 47 minutes left on that four hour candle. So it was very early in its candle for his. And moving on to the closing version of that candle, and after it stopped me out, it literally surged up with a strong bullish momentum. Now, if I had actually set my original plan, which would have been four pips less for both my entry and my stop, my stop probably would have held and I would have been in this trade. So it just goes to show that it's really important to follow your trade plan and not give in to emotions. Another lesson for me on this losing trade. A, another winning trade that I took this week was on pound Australian dollar. Uh, so this is a zoomed out version just to show the flow of price, although it has been down. We had the sharp momentum move up here and since then we've been swinging higher. So I actually went along with the short term uptrend. And just zooming in a little bit closer to current price action, I used a previous reaction leg measurement from the highs to calculate an entry for position long. And once we had the green candles forming to just build some support, that's where I got into this trade. Now I was actually aiming for 3R, which was a break of the high and also targeting the middle of the fork here. Uh, but I decided to trail a tight stop, which meant that I did get stopped out at 2R instead of 3R. So I made a little bit less on this trade, but it was still a winner. Um, finally, my last trade was on pound Swissy, which was a break even trade. Um, I was maybe a little bit too quick to trail the stop on this, but as price had come up and triggered my sell limit here, we dropped down and we did have this really nice bearish candle. 
And once price went below what I was risking for this trade, I thought it was a good point to move to break even because I was just very conscious to manage my risk to protect my accounts, especially at this stage during the funded account challenge. But as you can see, price came back up to my break even stop and stopped me out. So that are all the trades that I've taken this week. If you want some more information about the actual strategy that I've been using for this challenge, if you want to see it in more detail, I have shared a video about that recently and I'll include a link above so you can check that out. Meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this video, please drop me a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.